It's time for TT versus road bike. I've compared them on a climb and I've compared them on a descent with some interesting findings. So I suppose it just leaves me to compare them on the flat. But hang on, I know what you're thinking. There is no comparison. A TT bike is born and bred for the flat. It's designed to go fast. And I have to agree, but how about we throw in some technical sections? I mean, after all, not all triathlon courses are pan flat out and back along a highway. Quite often have to navigate technical sections. In some cases in the first and last couple of kilometers when you have to navigate in the town that the event is held in. So what is the difference between these two bikes in those situations? Well, today, I'm going to be riding my Cervelo P5X time trial bike and my Cervelo S5 road bike. Admittedly, one has rim brakes whilst the other has disc brakes, but they're the same bikes I've ridden on the hill climb and the descent, and I just like riding them. Now, before we get stuck into the technical section, I'm still interested to see the difference between the two bikes in a pan-flat time trial. We're all expecting the TT bike to come out on top, but it'd be interesting to see the difference, and then that'll give us a good benchmark when we're going into the technical comparison. So what I'm gonna do is ride both bikes at 350 watts over a three kilometer straight section behind me here. As simple as that. See what the times are after. I'm gonna ride road bike first. Okay, run one, let's go. Okay, I should have checked out the wind direction before that. That was hard work. Now for run two on the TT bike, let's go. Okay, that was hardly a huge surprise. So now let's move on to the bit we're all looking forward to. Well, I am at least. Behind me, I have a three kilometer technical section of road. It's got a bit of everything really. It's got sharp 90 degree bends, it's got sweeping bends, it's got bends into bends. It's even got a slight incline. I'll be honest, it doesn't leave many opportunities to use the aero bars on the TT bike, which is kind of what I'm after. Um, in addition to that, it's been raining pretty heavily, but that's the kind of stuff you have to deal with on race day, so it's perfect. Right, time to run, number one. Let's go. Okay, let's see how the TT bike compares now. Run two, let's go. Okay, the moment of truth, we've come in from the rain to check out the results. So here we go. The road bike, I went 451, which is a bit quicker than I was expecting actually. Then on the TT bike, I went 459. So a fraction slower, even though I was able to get into the aero bars on the TT bike for brief moments, I did feel like I was losing a lot more time on the corners, particularly in the wet, just because I've got so much more weight over the front end. I was worried about sort of losing the front wheel and the traction there. Does it mean I'll be switching to a road bike for non-drafting races? Probably not. I mean, that's still a relatively small amount of time and not all courses really gonna have that much technical sections during the race, um, only brief moments. And I'd actually say any time lost on those technical sections is gonna be far outweighed by the time gained on those straighter flat sections on a TT bike. So TT bike all the way for me. But hey you, this isn't the most thorough investigation. This is just one example of a technical route on my doorstep, but it's still thought provoking. And I'll be honest, this is something I've wanted to try for years. So hopefully you found it as interesting as I have. If you'd like to see more videos like this from GTN, you can click on the globe and subscribe. And if you'd like to see our other TT versus road bike videos, you can see the hill climb video up here and you can see the descending video here.